no matter what, I need to get out because that was my faith that I was going to be eaten by rats if I die in North Korea. And while they are dedicating 10,000 scientists and using actual human bodies to test and see how they are gonna keep these dictators alive forever, beer bottles from the trash dump and using it to as in a drop. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Today, in this video, I am going to talk about long request video, healthcare in North Korea. Before I get into details, I just want to explain to you quickly why I named my channel Voice of North Korea. When I first time heard this uh, radio called Voice of America, in Korean it's called Miguge Sori. In my it like made my heart like jumping and jumping someone like who was in love for the first time because you know the having a voice something that i never knew that humans could have a voice in in the world in north korea there are no public surveys or pollings because the individual opinion means nothing for the government They didn't have to bother to ask what we thought. But here in this country, what we think as an individual matters and it has an actual real effect. Because of that reason, it's so crucial for us to use our voice wisely and effectively. There are tons of people right now in this world do not have voice. And we are just so privileged to have that voice. I really want that the people who have voice use it to free others because we didn't get this voice just like you know by itself naturally somebody fought for it like our ancestors fought for it with their life so we could have voice in this world right now so today I, I am going to talk to you about the North Korea healthcare system in North Korea it's a socialist system therefore it's free healthcare, free education, free, I mean, pretty much what they say is everything is free. But in reality, of course, nothing is free. Like how, there's nothing free in this world. That is like how, how nature law, nothing is free. And how North Korea is gonna then have this free healthcare system. That means the tons of innocent lives are being lost due to malfunctioning healthcare system in North Korea. Before my escape, I was trying to escape with my own sister who was uh, 16 years old at the time. But before our escape, I was suddenly got really, really having this bad stomach ache. My parents took me to the hospital and in the hospital, we did not have like, you know, x-rays, not to mention MRIs or none of those like machines to see what's wrong with you. This doctor was like, you know, rubbing my belly that afternoon and said, Oh, I think she got some appendix, my burst soon, so we need to operate on her right now, like in a few hours. But that time when I was going to the hospital, literally the hospital beds were stains like of blood everywhere and people didn't have enough place to lie down, so they were like even lying down in these hallways. And Literally nurse in, in our room using this one meter, this is a huge meter too, using this one meter to inject on everyone. What do I know if those patients have other disease? Like you actually have a chances of you going to hospital and gaining new disease was higher than not going there. So she was injecting everyone with those like one needle she had. And the hospitals were using this like a uh, beer bottles from the trash dump and using it to as in a drop. And that afternoon when the doctors had to operate, of course my mom had to bribe these doctors. And they said, we don't have penicillin, so if you don't want her to get infection, you need to go to black market to buy the penicillin. 
My mom had to borrow money from the neighbors and bought the penicillin. Without that, I would have been dead from the infection. And the doctors were operating that afternoon without any anesthesia. I was like screaming and you know, it felt like while they were operating, cut my belly and everything, I was just losing my mind and coming back, losing my mind and coming back and felt like entire mind, like internal organs were just coming up, pulling out, somebody was stretching it. It is, you know, there's no way you can like stay like awake that time. I was keep like losing my mind and coming back and losing my mind and coming back. And I don't even know how I dare to read it. I just don't even know. But this is not like, but compared to a lot other my defector stories, like one of my defector friend, he was uh, picking up this car in the train track. A train went by, so he lost his arms and legs. When they were cutting his bones to stop the infection, they were just sewing the bone while he was wide awake. This is what free healthcare does eventually. And after that, um, I was, I was, you know, they stitched me back up and they realized I didn't have any appendix to, you know, it was just pure like malnutrition and infection. But they removed it anyway and closed it back. I was in this hospital and looking at other patients. Most of them were actually came back for infection. They had surgery and now the problem is infection. They were not using these clean knives or like sewing things, none of that. 기사들이 수술 준비를 하고 있습니다. 그러나 수술 장비라야 가위와 몇몇 보조 도구가 전부입니다. 의사가 입은 수술 가운과 환자를 덮은 천은 너무 오랫동안 빨지 않아 땜물에 절었습니다. 그러나 가장 큰 문제는 턱없이 부족한 마취약입니다. 복부 절개 수술을 하면서도 마취약이 없어 전신 마취는커녕 아주 제한된 양의 부분 마취만이 이루어집니다. 때문에 수술을 받는 이 젊은 여인은 수술 때 위해서 물고 고통을 참아내야 합니다. 수술 부위를 닦아내는 거즈는 몇 번을 썼는지 마치 걸레 같습니다. 북한 병원의 이 같은 충격적인 수술 장면은 두달반 동안 북한의 의료 실상을 조사한 국경 없는 의사회에 의해 오늘 세계 언론에 공개됐습니다. 국경 없는 의사회는 수술을 받은 이 여자가 이틀 뒤 병균에 감염돼 숨졌다고 밝히고 북한의 의료 체계는 완전히 붕괴됐다고 주장했습니다. We have doctors and hospitals everywhere, uh, but they have nothing to, to work with. There is no drug, there is no soap, there is no uh, any material to work with. 국경 없는 의사회는 또 많은 어린이들이 영양실조로 심각한 피부 질환을 앓고 있으며 이들에게 치료의 손길이 미치기는 기대할 수 없는 상황이라고 밝혔습니다. KBS 뉴스. So actually, there another problem is like fighting this. Infection because nothing was sanitary in the hospital. I remember my uh, my cousin. She was a medical doctor. She was OBGYN, and with her, I had to go to like mountains, picking up different plants, you know, to be self-reliant because government was not providing anything. So we really had to look for things to give it to the patient. So now I was in being patient. Of course, like a hospital had nothing to offer. And if we didn't have the money to bribe, they wouldn't even operate on me, even if I die. The last thing that made me to believe that no matter what, why I had escaped was seeing these piles of dead bodies from my, our hospital room to the restroom. And so in North Korea, obviously, you know, there's no running water, no running 24 hours electricity. And even in this hospital for the people who got just operation, we don't have the you know, bathroom to go in our building. We all had to walk outside to go to bathroom outdoor. And in between there, it was in 2007, uh, end of March, there were like piles of dead bodies. I still remember the woman who was dead and you know, you're seeing rats eating human eyes first. And you see these little kids, little boys are chasing those rats around because they are so hungry. And that's just hollow eye and that face like looking at me and she was so looked young. She was wearing these pants with like flower patterns on. And that could have been me, that could have been my mom, that could have been my sister. 
And my mom was like asking nurse because it wasn't like first time I was seeing dead bodies. I saw all my life in North Korea. But it was still like, you know, not pleasant to see every night when you go to bathroom and these piles of dead bodies and seeing these rats going back and forth and looking at me like when I'm gonna be like them so they can eat me too. And my mom was asking nurse, why are you not moving those bodies? And the nurse said, oh, we don't have gas to drive them and throw them to some other place. That's a living hair. That is definition of hair. And I just knew so clearly by that point, no matter what, I need to get out because that was my faith that I was going to be eaten by rats if I die in North Korea. There is even no dignified in North Korea for the people. After even we die, we get exploited by the regime. And this is a reality that when we pursue something like free, nothing is free guys like literally nothing somebody gotta pay for it and in this, this case the free socialism north korea is hold the price is being paid by 25 millions of human lives the innocent human lives uh in pyongyang obviously there is very good hospitals for the elite to go and kim jong-un to go uh there was course of like mansu um like the, they, in North Korea, there's like a lot of research groups dedicated to make the Kim's immortal. And there's 10,000 some th scientists, they you know test on actual human bodies to see what helps people to live forever. And they've been doing that since the founding of North Korean, you know, this socialist paradise, what they say. Of course, it's a hell, but they say, and while they're dedicating 10,000 scientists and using actual human bodies to test and see how they are gonna keep these dictators alive forever, the people of North Korea die from something as simple as fever and infection. I really hope that we use our voice again to use wisely, especially during this moment where we are facing such a crucial election it's coming up in few weeks and it's not my right to tell you vote or not but i think you know i say personally i'm looking forward to the day i can vote unfortunately i'm not a citizen i will be able to vote next year but there will be no presidential election then uh i just want you all of you to think wisely that by voting you can guard our democracy Thank you for watching and please leave your thoughts down below. See you all next time. Bye bye.